What is up awesome peeps? Brent McCluskey here with Electrified Reviews and today we are reviewing the iZip E3 Brio electric bike. All right guys, so again, this is the iZip E3 Brio. This is the second electric bike that we have reviewed from iZip. And um, like the other one we did, the Semi, this is just a really good quality electric bike and we're calling this the best electric bike under 1600 bucks that you can get in 2019. And yeah, there's a couple months left in the year, but we're pretty confident about that assessment uh, for a couple of main reasons here. And we'll go ahead and call out the main reasons of why we think this is the best bike under 1600 bucks and then we'll dive more deeply into them in a minute. But to start, look, iZip is a reputable company. These guys have been around for a while. They know what they're doing. This thing comes with a two-year warranty, which is, uh, I think, above and beyond. You know, typically you'll get a one-year warranty, six months, three months, something like that. But two years is, is really quite generous. And it just kind of helps give that, that, that safety, that feeling of comfort, you know? If I buy this thing, something goes wrong with it, they'll fix it for me right away. No problems, no questions asked. I do like that. Also, with this bike, uh, this color is black right here, and this is the only color that it does come in for this this one, the Brio. However, this bike does come in two different frame sizes, medium and large, and two different frame styles, the step over like this and a step through for people who want more of an approachable bike. Um, and again, just that's just a lot of options that you typically do not see for a bike at this price point. And it's just gonna mean that there's going to be a bike pretty much for everyone. Um, you know, um, there's gonna be a version of this bike pretty much for everyone. So if you're really tall, you can get the large. If you're a little bit on the shorter side, like me, you get the medium. And there's also, just to help things even more, there's also these uh, adjustable handlebars right here. You can adjust the angle, you can bring them forward to increase the reach. If you're a taller rider or if you want more of an aerodynamic kind of posture, or you can bring them up for more of a relaxed posture. So. Yeah, man, it's just, it's a dope bike. It's, uh, this thing is, this is like the commuter extraordinaire. Uh, so, oh, you know, I also want to talk about real quick assembly. Assembly of this thing was super, super easy. These guys, that are, they do, Isaac does a really fantastic, it's, it's a dope bike. It's uh, packaging everything so that um, nothing gets scratched during transit and so it's easy to put together. So, um, you know, this thing comes with the rear rack, it comes with fenders. The rear rack was already installed. The rear tire was already installed. Uh, the rear fender was already installed. The only things I had to put in was the, uh, the front headlight, the front tire, the front uh, uh, fender, and then the handlebars, that's it. And all in all, it didn't take very long. We have the unboxing video on IUTV if you are interested in seeing what that process looks like. But um, yeah, I, I'm really pleased with how Isaac packages their bike. So let's start back here with the motor. And if you guys did watch the Simi review, I'll just go ahead and tell you right off the bat, a lot of these specs are gonna be quite similar to the Simi. So starting back here with the motor, we do have a 250 watt uh, geared hub motor. 250 watts is, um, it's a smaller motor, but it's also very efficient. Efficient motor means you're gonna get more mileage out of this. It also means you're gonna get a little bit of a workout uh, because there's no throttle on this bike. So the good news about that is it makes this a class one electric bike, so it's gonna be legal to ride in almost all areas. So if you live in New York, um, or really any area with strict bike laws, this probably is gonna pass with flying colors. You're not gonna get, um, you're not gonna run into problems with that. The 250 watt motor here, does bring this bike up to a top speed of 20 miles per hour, which again is gonna be the, the limit 
uh, the upper limit for a class one electric bike. And uh, yeah, that's not like super fast, but it's that's fast enough. <laughs> I mean, 20 miles per hour is still typically a lot faster than you're going. I'm going to be going on an analog bike, you know what I'm saying? Now, like the Semi, we also have this Suntour Advanced, uh, pe this advanced pedal assist sensor, right? So basically this has a cadence sensor and a torque sensor, which is gonna make this a very responsive bike. And this is one of those components where, in my opinion, it's definitely an upgrade. And it's just not something you always see, again, on bikes at this price point. You typically only see a cadence sensor, maybe an eight magnet, maybe a 12 magnet, but this is a serious upgrade point, the Sun Tour advanced sensor here. It just means that the, the responsiveness of the bike is going to be a lot, lot better. So it's gonna feel more like this bike is working with you as opposed to for you, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, I start pedaling on this and instantly, as soon as I put any sort of pressure on the cranks, the motor kicks in and it starts giving me power that corresponds to how hard I'm pedaling. So the harder I pedal, the more power I get out of that motor, which is really exactly what I want. And that's just not something you can get on a cadence sensor. On a cadence sensor, you're gonna get full power as soon as the motor activates. So it's just kind of the difference, one of the big differences there. I love torque sensors, man. I mean, really, they're just the way to go, but they're typically a lot more expensive. So you just don't always see them, you know? On the battery here, we're gonna have, just like the Semi, it's gonna be this almost the same exact battery. 36 volts, 11.6 amp hours for this thing. So fair amount of juice in here. It's gonna give a estimated max range of about 60 miles, which sounds kind of high and it is kind of high, but there's a couple of reasons why that, that max estimated range is a little bit higher than average. Again, going back to that 250 watt motor here, that's very efficient. That's gonna really help boost the, uh, the range. The tires here, I think are one inch wide or 1.25 inch street tires. So that's also gonna help kind of maximize efficiency. And again, this is a pedal assist only. There's no throttle on the E3 Brio. So that is gonna force the rider to actually contribute energy, contribute their own um, wattage, right? To, to the bike here. So that's gonna really help boost that range. So for a longer commuter or for people who just don't wanna charge their bikes uh, a lot, I mean, this is, this is gonna be a good option here because of that max range. The battery itself here is locking and is removable. You just got a little, uh, a little quick, quick thingy right here for the battery indicator. You can see how much juice is left. It's not very bright. I'm not, yeah, you, you can kind of see it on camera. So you can see it's got a five bar battery indicator, 20% increments. So nice little way to check this thing, see how much juice is left without actually having to turn on the, the electrical system. And especially if you know I'm taking this battery off and charging it separate from the bike, it's nice to just kind of get a quick idea of how much, uh, you know, how much charging is left on this thing. I forgot to mention this, but another reason that I really like this bike is check out the, uh, look at the frame right here. This is a custom built frame with a cutout in the down tube for the battery. Again, just you just don't see this very often. This is not a regular frame that's been retrofitted with a motor and a battery. This is a custom built frame that iZip, you know, designed or got from somewhere, whatever, but it just makes it look cleaner. It, it makes a lower profile for that battery. And it's just something I really do appreciate. I really do like that. For braking here, we're gonna have 180 millimeter rotors here and it's gonna be mechanical disc brakes, Tektro uh, mechanical disc brakes here. Mechanical disc brakes, they offer plenty of stopping power, not as much as hydraulic, but they're also easier to adjust and work with if you do need to fix them. And I will say that out of the box here, these brakes did need a little bit of adjusting, so you might find that as well. I just wanna point out that for adjusting the brakes here, I'll show you on this side, a quick way to adjust them is gonna be this little section right here. Let me aim the camera down. This little guy right here on the back side of the brakes on the, uh, the brake assembly you can take an allen wrench and you can twist that uh, either direction it's going to close the caliper gap or widen it uh, just to help kind of fine tune the brakes there if that doesn't work for you guys you can of course just completely loosen the whole brake assembly right here move it around you might need to do that just so there's no squeaking no rubbing anything like that there is an integrated headlight and the E3 Brio here. You know, it's a decent headlight. It's not super bright. Um, like a lot of headlights on electric bikes, it's really not for illuminating your path. You're right, it's not for riding, in my opinion. It's for increasing visibility for oncoming traffic. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on real quick for you guys so you can see what it's like. And to turn this on, we'll show you here more in a second, but to turn that on, we're just gonna hit the power button. And then that's the light button right there. You can see it's already on. So I'll go back to the front headlight here. And that's what it looks like when it's on. 
So again, not super bright, uh, but it is going to increase visibility and that is going to increase safety. So, I mean, really every electric bike needs to have a headlight, but if you guys are looking to ride at night, I mean, I probably would suggest getting an aftermarket light, throwing it on the handlebars there, throwing it on your helmet, whatever, just to just to really throw out some lumens, you know, like at least a thousand lumens. This also does have a tail light, which I just love. Just extra visibility. Again, you're, it's not going to like, it's not super bright, but it is going to increase visibility. It's gonna help see other riders see you from behind. It's gonna help cars see you from behind. And again, really, it's just gonna maximize your safety, which is really, of course, I mean, that's a good thing. You want that, right? So, in the front here, we've also got suspension, Suntour NEX spring suspension here. 60 millimeters of travel. Um, yeah, these are, this is, I've seen this suspension a couple times now. This is a good suspension, I think, for road riding, especially for streets that are less than ideal. It really helps soak up little bumps. It helps soak up cracks in the road. You can even go off curbs and stuff with it. Um, you could even go on dirt trails. You can go on grass, stuff like this. I wouldn't really take this bike seriously off-road though. Excuse me, seriously off-road though, just because the tires, the suspension, it's not really built for that. But the suspension does help mitigate some small bumps and um, you know, it does add some weight, not, not tons. And this thing only weighs 55 pounds, the curb weight of this bike overall, which is really not that bad considering that it does have a rear rack, it has fenders, it has um, you know, disc brakes, it's got suspension, it's got pretty much everything. So yeah, and if you guys do want more suspension, because this is a hardtail, um, but if you do want more suspension, I would recommend just getting an aftermarket seat post suspension, throwing it on there. You know, 100 bucks goes a long way, man. Goes a long way for smoothing out, smooth out the ride for longer rides. It just makes it a lot more comfortable. The saddle here is semi-active, so it's going to not be super comfortable uh, as opposed to like a really relaxed saddle, um, but it is more active. It just helps with pedaling. It helps to have a kind of a stronger stroke. Um, <clears throat> the seat post here, does have a quick release latch, so you could just adjust that on the fly. You do not have to have tools. Same thing for the front wheel here. If you guys are traveling with this, gonna throw it on a bike rack or something, it's a quick release, it comes off really easily. In the back here, we've got a Shimano Tourney seven speed derailleur. Uh, this is a pretty entry level component. And you know, I've, I've kind of mentioned this before, but I gotta be honest with you guys, I don't really think that the derailleur matters so much for electric bikes, because one of the biggest things you're gonna get on higher end derailleurs is lighter weight. And a couple grams, it just doesn't matter for <laughs> like your bike when you got a motor. So, you know, I, I'm happy that they, cause look, here's the thing. They have the Shimano Tourney, which is entry level, but then they got this, I think it's a Shimano, uh, a Serra Shimano, I don't remember what it is. But they got these trigger shifters here, which are way nicer than the Shimano SIS index trigger, or index like thumb shifters, those big chunky ones that you typically see on, you know, bikes around this price point. So it's like, Look, you know, that's what I'm talking about. These guys, they chose to upgrade the right components. They, they didn't upgrade the trailer, which I don't think is a big deal in my opinion, but they did spend a little bit extra money on the trigger shifters, which is, it really makes just the ride more enjoyable. So I do appreciate that. Let's see what else to talk about on this bike. Let's go over here to the display and the handlebars again. All right, so for the display on this, Pretty simple, it's the same exact display that we see on the uh, Semi. Um, they might use this for most of their bikes, it looks like. Um, it's the Sun Tour display here. It's a nice display, it's simple, but it is effective. There's not a lot of information, but it gives you really just the information that you absolutely need. Um, I do appreciate that it is easy to see in broad daylight. Uh, you can see this thing in, in direct sunlight, not a, big, not a big issue at all. It's got three different modes, eco, standard, and high. You can go through that by clicking the up and down arrows the light button to turn on the lights like that, boom, boom. And then the power button, uh, long press turns it on, long press turns it off. That's gonna be your speed right here, three bar battery indicator. It's funny, there's only a three bar battery indicator on the display, but a five bar on the actual battery itself, which is gonna be give you a more accurate uh, battery reading. So I don't know, that's kind of funny. But uh, yeah, I mean, this thing does its job, it, it's fine. It does, it, it does require a tool if you want to move it, you know, or take it off, which not a big deal. Am I really gonna be adjusting this? No, not really. But if you do want to, it is a tool, uh, a tool adjust here. Last thing I wanna mention here before we go on the ride portion for this bad boy is uh, just, just look at the, how clean this thing is. Uh, the wire management on this bike is, is quite good in my opinion. Um, you can see the, the wire wrap there on the top of the bike coming out of the handlebars. 
it feeds into the frame, goes all the way through the down tube, and then spits out at the bottom of the cranks there. Just makes for a really clean bike. I mean, this, is, this isn't like a stealthy under the radar bike, electric bike, but it's a clean one in my opinion, and I do like that. And honestly, I mean, it's a bummer it only comes with one color. I personally love black. I mean, tactical black, like every, man, black out everything. I'm down with that, and I love lime green. So for me personally, aesthetically, I really dig how this thing looks. Maybe it won't jive with you guys, I don't know, but um, I dig it, man. I think the lime green accents with the black is, it's just, it's just a really sweet setup. So yeah, guys, that is, uh, that's the, E3 Brio here. I think the next thing to do is take this beauty on a test ride. So here we go. All right, awesome peeps. That is pretty much it for the iZip E3 Brio electric bike review. Hope you guys did dig this review. In summary, this is, in our opinion, going to be the best electric bike under 1600 bucks in 2019. And again, yes, I know there are still a few more months left in the year, but really, like we talked about, there's just so much that this bike offers. These, these guys, iZip, they really spent their money in the right places. Um, you know, in our opinion. Some of the things I think are really noteworthy about this bike is number one, like we talked about earlier, the frame. So again, we've got two different frame sizes for this bike and two different frame types. That's just not something you always see for a bike at this price point. iZip is also a reputable company, two year warranty. So if anything goes wrong, they'll fix it for you. It does have front suspension, disc brakes, efficient motor, decent sized battery, 11.6 amp hours. Overall, it's just a pretty sweet ride and it's gonna be a great commuter for people who want to actually stow stuff because again, this does come with a rear rack that's again, already installed. So there's no assembly required, which is very nice. So if we're going for the trips to the grocery store, going around town, um, even going for longer rides, I mean, again, the estimated range in this is gonna be about 60 miles because this is a class one, pedal assist only. So it's gonna really help maximize the miles. 250 watt efficient motor, very good for extending the range. And then of course we got these, I think it's a one, one inch or 1.25 inch tires here. It's going to also help improve efficiency. So you're really gonna squeeze a lot of range out of this bike. So yeah, again, really good commuter. And for those who are looking for a, something a little bit above an entry level bike, but really trying to maximize the bang for your buck. I mean, I think this is just, this is gonna be a great choice for you guys. So yeah, hope you, ha uh, hope you enjoyed this review. Hope you're having a fantastic day. Thank you guys very much for watching. I appreciate it. And I will catch you next time.